Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are here for our prompt webinar on September 11th, 2023. It is 12 noon Central Time. I'm Kathy Yao, Chair of NAPBC, and I'll be talking to you today about prompt. So we're going to talk about the prompt feedback survey. I think some of you may have received this survey. I know many of you did not. And Riley, who is sort of our HIT specialist, uh, is looking into this. We're hoping to just resend it to everybody uh, sometime this week. I'm hoping tomorrow we'll be able to do this. So you might end up receiving it twice, and I apologize. But very important, we would like you to fill this out. And I've got some more slides on this in a little bit later here. I'll talk just briefly about submission of 2022 data. And then I thought I'd take the opportunity to kind of walk through the prompt QI template. Uh, I did get a couple requests via email for this. So first the feedback survey, like I mentioned, some of you received it, some did not. We will plan to just resend to everybody. If you already received it and completed it, please just ignore uh, the email and it should be coming um, via red cap. There are a number of questions. It shouldn't take you very long to fill it out. Uh, we are very interested in your feedback. This is not mandatory that you fill it out, but as you can imagine, we're very interested in how you're doing and it will really help us to better provide resources for you. So I really do highly encourage that you fill out this feedback survey. We want to know which timeliness metric you're working on. We're very interested in how much time, no pun intended, it took you to fill uh, to complete prompt, uh, particularly the submission of the timeliness metric data, and then also the quality improvement phase. We're interested in how helpful our webinars, the templates, some of these other materials that we've provided to you are helping you or not. Are there other resources that you need to complete your projects? And we're also very interested in what types of interventions are you working on? We just want a simple list even if they're interventions you haven't started or maybe interventions you started and weren't successful or interventions you're thinking about, we're just very interested to see what people are doing out there. I also asked a question about office hours. Would that be helpful to you? I'm more than happy to provide uh, some advice about your QI projects and offering uh, some time, such as office hours, that you could get some of your questions answered about your QI projects. The 2022 data. Uh, you should have already received an email to submit the 2022 data. We wanted to have all of this by September 18th, which is this coming Monday, a week from today. Again, we plan to aggregate this data, send it back to you just like we did with the other years of data. You do not receive any additional credit for the 2022 data. This is simply so that you can use it for your QI projects. We only have data from about 25 sites. And as you can imagine, the more sites and the more data we have, the more useful it is going to be for you. So I really do encourage those sites that are able to do it, please submit your data. Let's walk uh, through the prompt QI template. Now you should have all received this. I don't know how many of you actually have looked at it. This is required that you fill out all of these steps to receive credit for the prompt study. This QI template is not due till uh, the end of this year. So you have some time uh, to finish this and some people might be doing it as they go along. Some people may decide to do it all at the end. It doesn't matter however you want to do it and whatever works best for you. But I thought I would just sort of walk through uh, the template and then we can address any questions you might have. Now the template is all centered around the new American College of Surgeons quality framework and all of the steps within that quality framework. And as you know, the quality framework is being used across all of the college quality programs. So bariatrics, trauma, pediatrics, so forth and so on are all going to be using this quality framework. It hasn't been officially launched within the cancer world, uh, but the plan is at some point that we will be using this quality framework. So I think 
by you uh, working on the prompt study, going through this template, you'll get sort of a head start. So the first step is problem detailing. And this part of the QI process sometimes can take a lot of time. I think for the prompt study, we sort of handed some of this to you on a silver platter, which helped eliminate a lot of the going back and forth and looking for data. A lot of problem detailing is obviously coming up with your problem. We sort of presented to you timeliness data, and we gave you a choice as to which timeliness metric that you want to work on and, and what kinds of problems are you having with timeliness at your center. But for most QI projects, a group has to sit down and come up with the problem themselves. And where do they find the data? Uh, we sort of simplified that for you just to kind of jumpstart the whole process. So the problem statement, uh, and as I mentioned in the instructional webinars, there is certain elements that you have to include in the problem statement. It's typically just one sentence. You want to state what the problem is. Uh, you want to state some numerical baseline, um, some goal metrics, and you want to frame what, what's the problem at your institution. For most of you, it's going to be around timeliness. The time from a screening mammogram to a diagnostic mammogram has doubled over the past year, some, something to that effect. We ask about which of the six Institute of Medicine improvement aims does your initiative address. These are uh, improvement aims that were codified in the Institute of Medicine Crossing the Quality Chasm document that was published nearly 20 years ago. Most of you, because we're working on timeliness, are going to be checking timely. There might be an occasional center that decided to focus on a different area. But I think for most of you, you will be focusing on timely care. We are interested in your improvement team, how many members are on your improvement team, and the names of the uh, members on your improvement team. More specifically, their titles. Do you have folks who are on the front lines? Do you have MDs, administrators, nurses, techs, uh, PAs? It should really be a multidisciplinary group of people that work with patients on timeliness care, and it shouldn't just be MDs. Again, multidisciplinary. What is your QI project's leader's role at your site? So who is leading the QI project? It's always important to have somebody leading the project. Is that person a physician? Is it a tour registrar? Is it a nurse, a quality officer? a program coordinator. If you click other, you will be taken to another field that will ask you specifically who the other is. Let's move on to the next step of the ACS quality framework aim specification. What is your aim statement? And this is, uh, again, typically one sentence, and it will codify and describe exactly what your aim is. We aim to improve the timeliness from screening mammogram to diagnostic mammogram from 100 days to 80 days from January of 2022 to January of 2023. Step three, strategic planning. This is a step where you are planning what you're going to do for your quality improvement project. Uh, we ask for you to put in the project start date. Uh, this is flexible. It can be the first time that your improvement team met to start discussing the project. That would be a good project start date. In strategic planning, you're looking for root causes. Why? You've already outlined your problem. You've outlined where you want to go with your aim statement. Now you need to get into the nitty gritty and the investigation. And what are the root causes of the problem? There are several tools that you can use to ferret out the root causes. There's the fishbone diagram, the process map. Uh, it's very important to understand the root causes because that will help you design interventions. And this brings me to the next section here list at least one intervention that you're employing. 
Now you might have several interventions. There might be four or five. As long as you list one, that is all we're asking. We're happy though to see many. If you wanna list four or five, that is completely fine. And same thing for the root causes. There could be several root causes that you come across. And if you wanna list more than two, that is completely fine and actually desirable. As we continue in strategic planning, what resources did you need to operationalize your intervention? Did you need more staff? Did you need more funds, equipment, time, IT support, infrastructure? You can click other and write in other things. Uh, again, this is gonna vary very much from hospital to hospital and from program to program, what kind of resources you needed. A lot of it does revolve around staff getting access to data, maybe HIT personnel. Just be very liberal in telling us what kinds of resources you needed to, to carry out your QI project. And again, you may not know this right now, you might have an idea of some of the resources you need, but by the end of the year, you'll probably have a very good idea of all the things that you needed. This uh, next question asks about the outcome measure that you're working on, which gets very much at your problem and your aim statement. Again, we have our four timeliness metrics, the time from screening to diagnostic, diagnostic to biopsy, biopsy to surgery, that's for those patients going to the OR first, and then biopsy to neoadjuvant therapy, and that's for patients who are gonna be undergoing neoadjuvant therapy first, uh, not surgery first. You can click other if you have a different outcome measure that you were looking at, and then that will bring up a field that you would write in what outcome measure you're looking at. In addition to an outcome measure, which again, we've sort of fed that to you, we're very interested in a balancing measure. The balancing measure measures a negative unintended consequence. So, and I've used this example many times. Uh, at my institution, we looked at the time interval from a screening to a diagnostic mammogram. And we thought, well, if we decrease that interval, that means we're gonna have to open up more diagnostic slots. Does that mean it's gonna take away from the screening mammogram slots? And will our screening mammogram volume drop? So that was our balancing measure to look at the number of screening mammograms before and after our intervention. You have to sit down as an improvement team and decide what would be a good balancing measure for your particular timeliness metric. Uh, it, it can be anything, uh, patient experience scores, uh, number of mammograms, number of biopsies. It has to be something numerical for which there is data that you can measure. So you can watch the balancing measure over time to see if it's been impacted or not. So again, it has to be something that you can easily pull the data for. Let's move on to the next step of the quality framework process evaluation. And this is where you're actually conducting your interventions in what we call PDSA cycles plan, do, study, act cycles, and then you're looking to see how the performance has changed. So you, you may be going through many PDSA cycles. Uh, we just want you to outline one of them for us. Again, if you want to outline two or three, more than happy to review that. We're interested to know how often did you meet and review your outcome and your balancing measures? Were you looking at those weekly? monthly, uh, maybe every other month? Uh, did you decide maybe we just look at it every three months? Uh, again, we wanna know sort of how often you're reviewing your data. Then we wanna know how the intervention that you employed in your QI project impacted your outcome measure and how it impacted your balancing measure. So we do have a table here where you can list your outcome measure numbers before and after the intervention, and you can do the same thing for the balancing measure. So for example, in my QI project, the time interval between a screen and diagnostic, we list those number of days before we did our interventions. So 21 days, I'm just making this number up. And then we list the number of days after we did our intervention. 
10 days. Then we go to the balancing measure. For us, it was the number of screening mammograms. So we would say, well, before the intervention, we had 5,000 screening mammograms per month. After the intervention, we had 6,000 screening mammograms per month. And those would be the numbers that we would fill in uh, into these boxes. Now, as I mentioned, you may have several interventions that you're looking at. And I would say for this uh, particular part of the QI template, I would take the intervention that you felt was most effective and had the most impact on your outcome and balancing measures and list that one here. So it's obviously difficult to list all of them. Next uh, step is the outcome evaluation, looking at your project and how successful it was. Did you feel it was successful? Yes, no, we needed more time to complete it. Uh, we couldn't achieve our main goal. We need more resources. We're not really sure. So there may be many of you that launched a QI project, you tried, you identified many root causes, you identified many interventions, you implemented the interventions, but you just were not able to get your outcome measure to the point of where you wanted to get it. And that's fine. I'm not going to penalize you if you don't see improvement. It's more about going through the whole process and the steps to understand the whole QI process that's more important. So if you don't see an improvement, you're not going to get penalized. It's, you're not, we're not going to say, oh, you don't get credit, nothing like that at all. But it is important, obviously, to go back and look at your performance and see how you did. You can identify a limitation or a barrier that you ran into with your QI project. I know we ran into many barriers during my uh, QI project. Uh, it could be personnel, it could be leadership, it could be hospital resources, uh, the data. I mean, getting data to measure some of these things, particularly a balancing measure, can be very difficult to find people to get the data for you, get it in time, make sure it's not, make sure the data is clean. So there, there's lots of things, but we're very interested in sort of what you run into. And again, you can identify more than one limitation or barrier if you like. We want to know a positive consequence of your QI project. Even if your QI project didn't result in an improvement in your outcome measure or an improvement in the balancing measure, there may be other positive consequences of your QI project, and we'd like to know what those are. Next to last step is knowledge acquisition. Did you share the results with your breast program leadership team? Uh, did you share it with them monthly? Did you share it with them just at one meeting at the end of the year? How did you share it with them? And did you share the results with anybody else? Maybe other administrators, other clinical teams, maybe the quality improvement team at your hospital, maybe other leaders, anybody sort of outside of the breast program leadership group and you can select other and then specify other recipients that learned about your quality project. The last step of the QI template is end of project decision making. The project end date is when you finish the project. So again, that could be in December when you finish the project. Uh, many of you might extend your project into 2024, and that is perfectly fine. You can do that. You do not get credit for a 2024 QI project. However, in 2024, you have to start a new one according to the new standards. But you can continue working on prompt through 2024. What are your future plans for your QI project? Are you going to continue? Are you going to get rid of it? Are you going to build on it? Maybe revise it. We'd be curious to see what your plans are. And then a sustainability plan. How do you plan to make sure that your quality improvement project is sustainable and that it has long lasting impact on your quality uh, measures, on your aim, all of those things? How do, how do you make sure you don't slip back to where you were? before. So that is the end of the template. Now for those sites that are not going to be finished by the end of December, uh, I would simply 
<clears throat> fill out as much of the QI template as you can. And when you get to this section of the QI template, you can write in that you anticipate you won't be done until 2024, maybe not until March or June of 2024. And you can specify sort of the future plans for your QI project. You still need to finish this. You're still looking at an outcome measure and you anticipate that you will be done in March of 2024. And then you'll still get credit for uh, this year, for 2023. So that is all I have today. I know I've spoken in the past about a new platform that we're trying to launch that uh, would provide sort of a forum for all the sites to, to talk with each other and converse with each other about their QI projects and particularly about some of the root causes they're running into and some of the interventions so sites can learn from each other about their interventions. I'm still working with Salesforce to get this platform off the ground. We were hoping that we'd be able to send an email to you soon for you to register, but I'm hoping I'll be able to do that in the next few weeks. So please look out for an email from us about that. Uh, our next webinar is October 9th at 12 noon again, Central Standard Time. And at this time, I can start taking some questions. I don't have Sandra with me today. She is on vacation today, so please bear with me. But I am going to pull out the question panel here. So I see one question. Um, where do we obtain the prompt QI template? You should have gotten an email about it uh, many, many months ago. If you can't locate that, you can send us an email at B as in boy, R as in rain, P as in people at northshore.org and just identify yourself, your center. And then I can have Riley uh, can send you an updated QI template. Can you share when you will have webinars on the 2024 standards? Can you share now any changes to the standards? I can't share any changes to the standards. Uh, and I cannot share right now when we will have any webinars on the 2024 standards. Right now, we are undergoing some pilot visits and pilot site reviews, and we want to get all of that feedback before we issue any more webinars or any more changes to the 2024 standards. It probably won't be huge, dramatic changes. There'll be more clarifications. We are going to be developing an FAQ document to give more detail and clarifications about those areas of the standards that people have questions. So that will be coming, but the pilot site visits are going on as we speak, so we're waiting for that feedback first. Can we resend the QI templates to all the centers? I think, um, Riley, are you on the call? I think Riley is on, but yes, we can certainly do that. If you guys don't mind getting all these emails in your box, but we could resend the QI template to everybody. Yes, I'm here, Dr. Yao. Okay. Is that okay, Riley? Can we resend everybody their QI template? I think so, yeah. It would just be everyone would get another email, but as long as it's okay with everyone, yeah. Okay. All right. So you'll be getting several emails from us. One email about the prompt feedback survey and then another email with the prompt QI template. I think probably the best idea is to send out the prompt feedback survey this week and the prompt QI template could go out next week so that you don't confuse the two. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, if we signed up to do two metrics, but can actually finish one, is that okay? That is completely fine, yes. Now, if you signed up to do two metrics and you wanna do both, I'm thinking about the QI, ideally it'd probably be best if you filled out two separate QI templates. Is it possible for a center to do that, Riley? Could a center get like two separate QI templates to fill out? Yeah, so if, if they selected more than one metric on the declaration form, they should have gotten two, two okay. separate emails okay. with one template each. Okay. If you're a center that signed up for two and you didn't get the two separate um, 
QI, you know, again, just email us, brp at northshore.org, and we can get that to you. Any, do, do people feel that an office hours would be helpful? I'm happy to answer questions about QI projects. When is the due date for the prompt? I think you're probably referring to the prompt feedback survey. Uh, I'd like to get that back by the end of September. So, um, so September 30th is a Saturday. Let's just say we'd like to get it back by October 2nd. That's a Monday. Okay. How should we prepare for 2024 standards without knowing exactly what, uh, what is needed? Uh, so there is, the 2024 standards are available. You can review them. I think what you need is probably some more clarification on some areas of the standards that we get common questions about. And Again, once we get our feedback from our pilot sites, we will be issuing some webinars and a FAQ document that will carefully outline and clarify some of these areas of the standards. Hoping that we can get that all out there before the end of the year so that you can be prepared when 2024 rolls around. Dr. Yao, this is Asa. Can I jump in one second yeah. here? to remind everybody that we will be doing an NAPBC workshop, four-hour workshop at the um, Cancer Conference, which will be held in Austin, Texas um, in February of 2024, February 22nd through 24th, and the NAPBC half-day workshop will be held on the morning of the 22nd. Okay, this is in Austin. Correct, that's Texas. correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, great, yes. That'll be a great place to get your questions answered. But I'm hoping we can have this FAQ document in pretty good shape by then. Is the QI template uh, due the end of December or are we to use data through December and report, submit the QI template at the beginning of the year? I prefer to get the QI template you know, towards the end of December, early January, you want to just have it to us so that we can, again, issue you a formal letter saying that you completed the template and that you get credit for participating. If you'd like to be able to include uh, certain data that you have in December um, and you want to submit it the first or second day of January, I mean, that's fine too. But it's got to be, you know, somewhere around there so that we can get your documentation that you completed it. Uh, can those be available virtually? I think, are you referring, so ASA, is the meeting in February, is it virtual or in-person or both? Um, it's in-person. However, we do plan to record the content and make that available through our learning management system. Um, and we're working really hard to make sure that it's available about six weeks or so after the in-person conference. So it would be probably the end of March. Okay. Great. Any consideration to delay starting the 2024 standards in January? We have not uh, considered that at this time. And I'd be curious to hear from you as to why uh, you feel that we should consider delaying these standards. Uh, they have been available for some time now, but again, uh, feel free to email me and I'm happy to hear your thoughts about it. My, my email here at work uh, is kyao at northshore.org, pretty easy, but I'm happy to hear your thoughts about it. Chapter five, 2024 standards is the most difficult to roll out for our physicians. We need ample time if there are changes to these particular standards, especially if you're expecting us to have everything in place on 1124. So I don't know when your next site visit is happening, but remember that if 
you have a site visit in 2024, you're not going to be reviewed on 2024 standards. You're going to be reviewed on the 2018 standards because you will have had no time to do them. If you have a site visit in 2025, then you will be reviewed on 2024 standards. So you have to have at least a year of the 2024 under your belt to be able to be reviewed. So um, I think people have this perception that, oh my gosh, our site review is coming up in March of 2024. I'm going to have to do all the 2024 standards by then. But that's not the case because you would only have maybe two or three months to show program and that's not how this works so if you're being reviewed in 2024 it's not on 2024 standards it's on 2018 standards it's not until 2025 that you'll get reviewed on the 2024 standards do we need to submit any other uh, documentation other than the template uh, no you just need to submit that template fill in all the fields uh, just as as I instructed and once we get that, then you will get an official letter that will document that you completed the prompt study and you get official credit for that. Um, what if we're 2025 and we do 2024 incorrectly because it changed? So our plan is not to change anything dramatically. It's more just to provide clarification and examples uh, of certain areas that we've gotten lots of questions about. So you're not going to see big, major changes. And if we did, for whatever reason, do a big, major change, we would penalize you for that. But we will be reviewed for all 2024 at some point in time. You will, yes. So you do have to start implementing, enacting, and, and you know, doing the standards in 2024, and you have that whole year to get it up and running. What do programs need to submit to the PRQ for prompt to show participation? Uh, so for the first year prompt, I think we sent all the programs an email uh, confirming their participation, and we told them to submit that to the PRQ, and it'll be a similar thing for the second year prompt, where once we get the template, then you'll get an official email, a letter via email that will confirm that you participated in prompt, and then that would be what you would upload to the PRQ. Are you referring to the red cap template? I'm not sure what that question is referring to. Uh, the prompt QI template is a red cap survey. Will the Austin conference have virtual options? Just as Asa mentioned, uh, there will be no um, in person, I mean, excuse me, virtual option for the meeting, but the meeting will be recorded and that recorded content will be available to everybody uh, approximately six weeks after the conference. Okay, I think that is all the questions we have right now. And again, if you have other uh, questions, things that you know, were not addressed here today, burning questions you have, you don't want to put on the question function here, please email us at brp at northshore.org. We're happy to answer your questions, help you. Uh, I've had some sites reach out to me asking specific questions about their QI projects. I've done conference calls with sites. I'm happy to do that to help you. We really just want to get you all familiar with this QI process learn the tools, learn the framework, and really equip you so that you are successful and can conduct these projects in the future by yourself. I think that is all we have for now. Um, anything, Chantel, Asa, am I missing any other questions or things that I should address? Uh, not that I'm aware of, though I will let everybody know that registration for the conference, including the NAPBC workshop, um, is will be opening this week, um, and they should watch for um, an email from us um, announcing that registration is open. Okay. I think somebody asked about is there a cost for the recorded option? If you, well, the answer to that is probably yes or no. If, you, if you're there in person, and you want to be able to view the content afterwards, we'll give you that access for free. 
However, if you cannot attend in person and you want to uh, view the recorded content, yes, there will be a fee. Okay. Okay. I don't know what that fee is yet, but uh, but you know there will be a fee. Okay. All right. Uh, and then a question about standard 2.1 about alternates. Uh, I will have to look again at that standard. Um, and I thought we had included that, but I will look at that again. Okay, I think that's all I have for now. And again, like I said, BRP at NorthShore.org. I know a lot of you have been emailing us, but we'd love to hear from you. Please fill out the prompt feedback survey. Be honest. You're not going to be penalized for your answers. And um, I, we just want to know what we can do to make it better for you and how to help you. I hope you all have a great day and look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye-bye.